hydraulic pumps and motors have also been used for some smaller engines. Many of these systems are not often used on modern commercial aircraft because of the high power demands required to turn the large turbofan engines during the starting cycle on transport aircraft. Electric Starting Systems and Starter Generator Starting System Electric starting systems for gas turbine aircraft are of two general types. Direct cranking electrical systems and starter generator systems. Direct cranking electric starting systems are used mostly on small turbine engines, such as auxiliary power units, APIS, and some small turboshaft engines. Many gas turbine aircraft are equipped with starter generator systems. Starter generator starting systems are also similar to direct cranking electrical systems except that after functioning as a starter, they contain a second series of windings that allow it to switch to a generator after the engine has reached a self-sustaining speed. This saves weight and space on the engine. The starter generator is permanently engaged with the engine shaft through the necessary drive gears, while the direct cranking starter must employ some means of disengaging the starter from the shaft after the engine has started. The starter generator unit is basically a shunt generator with an additional heavy series winding. Figure 5-16 this series winding is electrically connected to produce a strong field, and a resulting high torque for starting. Starter generator units are desirable from an economical standpoint, since one unit performs the functions of both starter and generator. Additionally, the total weight of starting system components is reduced and fewer spare parts are required. Cooling air gear ratio approximately 435 to 1. To voltage regulator. Shunt. Output. To generator paralleling and protective circuitry. Series. The starter generator internal circuit has four field windings. A series field, C field, a shunt field, a compensating field, and an interpole or commutating winding. Figure 5-17. During starting, the C field, compensating, and commutating windings are used. The unit is similar to a direct cranking starter since all of the windings used during starting are in series with the source. While acting as a starter, the unit makes no practical use of its shunt field. A source of 24 volts and 1500 peak amperes is usually required for starting. Commutating. Compensated field. Shunt field. C field. DB plus. EA plus C plus. Figure 5-17. Starter generator internal circuit. When operating as a generator, the shunt, compensating, and commutating windings are used. The C field is used only for starting purposes. The shunt field is connected in the conventional voltage control circuit for the generator. Compensating and commutating or interpole windings provide almost sparkless commutation from no load to full load. Figure 5-18 illustrates the external circuit of a starter generator with an undercurrent controller. This unit controls the starter generator when it is used as a starter. Its purpose is to assure positive action of the starter, and to keep it operating until the engine is rotating fast enough to sustain combustion. The control block of the undercurrent controller contains two relays. One is the motor relay that controls the input to the starter. The other, the undercurrent relay, controls the operation of the motor relay. Figure 5-16. Typical starter generator. 5-11. The sequence of operation for the starting system is discussed in the following paragraphs. Figure 5-18. To start an engine equipped with an undercurrent relay, it is first necessary to close the engine master switch. This completes the circuit from the aircraft's bus to the start switch, to the fuel valves, and to the throttle relay. Energizing the throttle relay starts the fuel pumps, and completing the fuel valve circuit gives the necessary fuel pressure for starting the engine. As the battery and start switch is turned on, three relays close, the motor relay, ignition relay, and battery cutout relay. The motor relay closes the circuit from the power source to the starter motor. The ignition relay closes the circuit to the ignition units. The battery cutout relay disconnects the battery. Opening the battery circuit is necessary, because the heavy drain of the starter motor would damage the battery. Closing the motor relay allows a very high current to flow to the motor. Since this current flows through the coil of the undercurrent relay, it closes. Closing the undercurrent relay completes a circuit from the positive bus to the motor relay coil, ignition relay coil, and battery cutout relay coil. The start switch is allowed to return to its normal off position and all units continue to operate. As the motor builds up speed, the current draw of the motor begins to decrease. As it decreases to less than 200 amps, the undercurrent relay opens. This action breaks the circuit from the positive bus to the coils of the motor, ignition, and battery cutout relays. The de-energizing of these relay coils halts the start operation. After these procedures are completed, the engine should be operating efficiently and ignition should be self-sustaining. If, however, the engine fails to reach sufficient speed to halt the starter operation, the stop switch may be used to break the circuit from the positive bus to the main contacts of the undercurrent relay. Troubleshooting a starter generator starting system. The procedures listed in figure 5-19 are typical of those used to repair malfunctions in a starter generator starting system similar to the system described in this section. These procedures are presented as a guide only. The appropriate manufacturer's instructions and approved maintenance directives should always be consulted for the aircraft involved. Emergency stop. To fuel valve. Engine master switch. Before relay. On off. To external power receptacle. Motor relay undercurrent relay. BG. CM. Start.
Battery and start switch. Starter generator. C. B. A. Battery on. Battery cutout relay. Throttle relay. To fuel pumps. Throttle relay lock ignition relay. E. Throttle switch. Advance. Retard. Ignition vibrator. Figure 5-18. Starter generator circuit. 5-12. Starter generator starting system troubleshooting procedures. Probable cause isolation procedure remedy. Engine does not rotate during start attempt. Low supply voltage to the starter. Power switch is defective. Ignition switch in throttle quadrant. Start lockout relay is defective. Battery series relay is defective. Starter relay is defective. Defective starter. Start lock and relay defective. Starter drive shaft and component drive gearbox is sheared. Insufficient starter voltage. Defective ignition system. Engine starts but does not accelerate to idle. Engine fails to start when throttle is placed in idle. Check voltage of the battery or external power source. Check switch for continuity. Check switch for continuity. Check position of generator control switch. With start circuit energized. Check for 48 volt DC across series relay coil. With start circuit energized. Check for 48 volt DC across starter relay coil. With start circuit energized. Check for proper voltage at the starter. With start circuit energized. Check for 28 volt DC across the relay coil. Listen for sounds of starter rotation during an attempted start. If the starter rotates but the engine does not, the drive shaft is sheared. Check starter terminal voltage. Turn on system and listen for spark igniter operation. Adjust voltage of the external power source or charge batteries. Replace switch. Replace switch. Place switch in off position. Replace relay if no voltage is present. Replace relay if no voltage is present. Replace the starter if voltage is present. Replace relay if voltage is not present. Replace the engine. Use larger capacity ground power unit or charge batteries. Clean or replace spark igniters. Or replace exciters or leads to igniters. Figure 5-19. Starter generator starting system troubleshooting procedures. Air turbine starters. Air turbine starters are designed to provide high starting torque from a small, lightweight source. The typical air turbine starter weighs from one fourth to one half as much as an electric starter capable of starting the same engine. It is capable of developing considerable more torque than the electric starter. The typical air turbine starter consists of an axial flow turbine that turns a drive coupling through a reduction gear train and a starter clutch mechanism. The air to operate an air turbine starter is supplied from either a ground operated air cart, the APU or a cross bleed start from an engine already operating. Figure 5-20, only one source of around 30-50 pounds per square inch, psi, is used at a time to start the engines. The pressure in the ducts must be high enough to provide for a complete start with a normal limit minimum of about 30 psi. When starting engines with an air turbine starter, always check the duct pressure prior to the start attempt. Figure 5-21 is a cutaway view of an air turbine starter. The starter is operated by introducing air of sufficient volume and pressure into the starter inlet. The air passes into the starter turbine housing where it is directed against the rotor blades by the nozzle vanes causing the turbine rotor to turn. As the rotor turns, it drives the reduction gear train and clutch arrangement, which includes the rotor pinion, planet gears and carrier, sprag clutch assembly, output shaft assembly, and drive coupling. The sprag clutch assembly engages automatically as soon as the rotor starts to turn, but disengages as soon as the drive coupling turns more rapidly than the rotor side. When the starter reaches this overrun speed, the action of the sprag clutch allows the gear train to coast to a halt. The output shaft assembly and drive coupling continue to turn as long as the engine is running. A rotor switch actuator, mounted in the turbine rotor hub, is set to open the turbine switch when the starter reaches cutout speed. Opening the turbine switch interrupts an electrical signal to the start valve. This closes the valve and shuts off the air supply to the starter. 5-13 Cross feed from running engine auxiliary power unit, APU, airframe pylon, ground start supply, external gearbox, air control valve, exhaust air. Engine air starter. High pressure air. Figure 5-20. Air turbine starters are supplied by ground cart, APU, or another operating onboard engine. The turbine housing contains the turbine rotor, the rotor switch actuator, and the nozzle components that direct the inlet air against the rotor blades. The turbine housing incorporates a turbine rotor containment ring designed to dissipate the energy of blade fragments and direct their discharge at low energy through the exhaust duct in the event of rotor failure due to excessive turbine overspeed. The transmission housing contains the reduction gears, the clutch components, and the drive coupling. The transmission housing also provides a reservoir for the lubricating oil. Figure 5-22. Normal maintenance for air turbine starters includes checking the oil level, inspecting the magnetic chip detector for metal particles, and checking for leaks. Oil can be added to the transmission housing sump through a port in the starter. This port is closed by a vent plug containing a ball valve that allows the sump to be vented to the atmosphere during normal flight. The housing also incorporates a sight gauge that is used to check the oil quantity. A magnetic drain. Plug in the transmission drain opening attracts any ferrous particles that may be in the oil. The starter uses turbine oil, the same as the engine, 
but this oil does not circulate through the engine. The ring gear housing, which is internal, contains the rotor assembly. The switch housing contains the turbine switch and bracket assembly. To facilitate starter installation and removal, a mounting adapter is bolted to the mounting pad on the engine. Quick attach clamps join the starter to the mounting adapter and inlet duct. Figure 5-22. Thus, the starter is easily removed for maintenance or overhaul by disconnecting the electrical line, loosening the clamps, and carefully disengaging the drive coupling from the engine starter drive as the starter is withdrawn. The air path is directed through a combination pressure regulating and shutoff valve, or bleed valve, that controls all duct pressure flowing to the starter inlet ducting. This valve, 5-14, air outlet, turbine rotor, engine drive shaft, air inlet, clutch, reduction gear, FWD, figure 5-21, cutaway view of an air turbine starter, CAD adapter, oil fill plug, air inlet, CAD coupling clamp, magnetic oil drain plug, FWD, exhaust, sight glass, oil level overflow, figure 5-22, air turbine starter, 5-15, Regulates the pressure of the starter operating air and shuts off the air supply to the engine when selected off. Downstream from the bleed valve is the start valve, which is used to control airflow into the starter. Figure 5-23, butterfly air control valve. Pneumatic valve operating mechanism. Figure 5-23, regulating and shutoff bleed valve. The pressure regulating and shutoff valve consists of two sub-assemblies. Pressure regulating valve and pressure irregulating valve control. Figure 5-24. The regulating valve assembly consists of a valve housing containing a butterfly type valve. Figure 5-24. The shaft of the butterfly valve is connected through a cam arrangement to a servo piston. When the piston is actuated, its motion on the cam causes rotation of the butterfly valve. The slope of the cam track is designed to provide small initial travel and high initial torque when the starter is actuated. The cam track slope also provides more stable action by increasing the opening time of the valve. The control assembly is mounted on the regulating valve housing and consists of a control housing in which a solenoid is used to stop the action of the control crank in the off position. Figure 5-24. The control crank links a pilot valve that meters pressure to the servo piston, with the bellows connected by an air line to the pressure sensing port on the starter. Turning on the starter switch energies is the regulating valve solenoid. The solenoid retracts and allows the control crank to rotate to the open position. The control crank is rotated by the control rod spring moving the control rod against the closed end of the bellows. Since the regulating valve is closed and downstream pressure is negligible, the bellows can be fully extended by the bellows spring. As the control crank rotates to the open position, it causes the pilot valve rod to open the pilot valve, allowing upstream air, which is supplied to the pilot valve through a suitable filter and a restriction in the housing, to flow into the servo piston chamber. The drain side of the pilot valve, which bleeds the servo chamber to the atmosphere, is now closed by the pilot valve rod and the servo piston moves inboard. Figure 5-24 this linear motion of the servo piston is translated to rotary motion of the valve shaft by the rotating cam, thus opening the regulating valve. As the valve opens, downstream pressure increases. This pressure is bled back to the bellows through the pressure sensing line and compresses the bellows. This action moves the control rod, thereby turning the control crank and moving the pilot valve rod gradually away from the servo chamber to vent to the solenoid. Restriction. Filter. Servo piston. On. Control crank. From air supply. Upstream. Rotating cam inlet pressure. Valve shaft. Pilot valve rod. Open. Pilot valve cap station area cam. To pressure sensing port. Downstream pressure. Regulating valve. To starter. Downstream. Control rod bellows. Figure 5-24. Pressure regulating and shutoff valve in on position. 5-16. Atmosphere. Figure 5-24. When downstream. Regulated. Pressure reaches a preset value. The amount of air flowing into the servo through the restriction equals the amount of air being bled to the atmosphere through the servo bleed. The system is in a state of equilibrium. When the bleed valve and the start valve are open, the regulated air passing through the inlet housing of the starter impinges on the turbine causing it to turn. As the turbine turns, the gear train is activated and the inboard clutch gear, which is threaded onto a helical screw, moves forward as it rotates. Its jaw teeth engage those of the outboard clutch gear to drive the output shaft of the starter. The clutch is an overrunning type to facilitate positive engagement and minimize chatter. When starter cutout speed is reached, the start valve is closed. When the air to the starter is terminated, the outboard clutch gear, driven by the engine, begins to turn faster than the inboard clutch gear. The inboard clutch gear, actuated by the return spring, disengages the outboard clutch gear allowing the rotor to coast to a halt. The outboard clutch shaft continues to turn with the engine. Air Turbine Starter Troubleshooting Guide The troubleshooting procedures listed in Figure 5-25 are applicable to air turbine starting systems equipped with a combination pressure regulating and shutoff valve. These procedures should be used as a guide only, and are not intended to replace the manufacturer's instructions.
Air turbine starter system troubleshooting procedures. Trouble probable cause remedy. Starter does not operate. No rotation. Starter will not accelerate to normal cutoff speed. Starter will not not cut off. External oil leakage. Starter runs, but engine does not turn over. Starter inlet will not line up with supply ducting. Metallic particles on magnetic drain plug. Broken nozzle veins. Oil leakage from vent plug assembly. Oil leakage at drive coupling. No air supply. Electrical open and cutout switch. Sheared starter drive coupling. Internal starter discrepancy. Low starter air supply. Starter cutout switch set improperly. Valve pressure regulated too low. Internal starter malfunction. Low air supply. Rotor switch actuator set too high. Starter cutout switch shorted. Oil level too high. Loose vent. Oil filler. Or magnetic plugs. Loose clamp band assembly. Sheared drive coupling. Improper installation of starter on engine. Or improper indexing of turbine housing on starter. Small fuzzy particles indicate normal wear. Particles coarser than fuzzy. Chips. Slivers. Etc. Indicate internal difficulty. Large foreign particles in air supply. Improper starter installation position. Leaking rear seal assembly. Check air supply. Check switch continuity. If no continuity, remove starter and adjust or replace switch. Remove starter and replace drive coupling. Remove and replace starter. Check air source pressure. Adjust rotor switch actuator. Replace valve. Remove and replace starter. Check air supply. Adjust switch actuator assembly. Replace switch and bracket assembly. Drain oil and reservice properly. Tighten magnetic plug to proper torque. Tighten vent and oil filler plugs as necessary and block wire. Tighten clamp band assembly to higher torque. Remove starter and replace the drive coupling. If couplings persist in breaking in unusually short periods of time, remove and replace starter. Check installation and or indexing for conformance with manufacturer's installation instructions and the proper index position of the turbine housing specified for the aircraft. No remedial action required. Remove and replace starter. Remove and replace starter and check air supply filter. Check installed position for levelness of oil plugs and correct as required in accordance with manufacturer's installation instructions. Remove and replace starter. Figure 5-25. Air turbine starter system troubleshooting procedures. 5-17. 5-18.